is up on top of the bluff. Down there is the Black River. That's Sutton Bluff campsite down there. In the, uh, in the summer, you probably won't be able to see this just due to the fact that uh, it'll be all overgrown. This has uh, some of the nicest views on the sections that I've done. There's a real nice one on Cotaway overlooking a farm, very, very nice pastoral scene. But uh, overlooking the Black River is pretty nice here. This is uh, by far one of the better, probably the best view of uh, this area. It's unobstructed. Um, be nice to hike up here and see a nice sunrise. But they got a little bench, you know, come propose. The, uh, the trail in, in this part, right along the bluff, is quite narrow and uh, it's a little soft when wet, so make sure to take care. There is uh, there's a lot of snow here, so we'll have to be careful going around. A lot of ice dripping off the uh, the bluff there. I noticed another pair of footprints in the snow, so I think that there's a uh, hiker up in front of me. I also noticed a uh, a mountain bike track, as you can see right here. And uh, while I think you can mountain bike, I don't know if I'd want to because it's it's pretty steep. Well, I made it past the bluff. It was a bit sketchy there for uh, for a little bit. Some of that snow had drifted up on the sides, and so you had to uh, basically kind of cut your foot in sideways. I'm glad I had trekking poles. I can't imagine the um, the guys doing the Pacific Crest Trail when they're out on the uh, in the Sierras with all that snow and uh, John Muir uh, section. You know, crossing some of those peaks with snow. That's crazy. I know a lot of them will uh, send ahead of an ice axing and crampons, and and in that particular case, something like a uh, those yak tracks or something would probably be useful. You could slip them on. But we're off of it, and now we're descending down into the uh, the little valley and heading down towards Beef Fork. But overall, I'm doing all right. Legs seem to be in good shape. I have no issues with uh, my feet at all. They, uh, I dried them off, cleaned them really good, and the fact that I had camp shoes, I was able to walk around barefoot and really dry out the uh, the feet, you know, before I put on my uh, my sleeping socks. So I think that uh, I think that method is going to work with two pairs of socks and then a pair to sleep in. So I'll give it a chance for one pair to thoroughly dry out, and you can start swapping between the two. And the extra weight of sleeping socks is really, I think, negligible compared to the benefit that you're going to get. All right, getting closer to Bee's Fork. It is uh, currently sleeting, or attempting to snow, or raining little tiny ice pellets, however you want to look at it. But uh, I was able to hike for a little while without the windshirt. It's going to dry me out a little bit. A little sweaty and it's a little chilly. Now, I do have to say that there is a ton of hills on this section. I had forgotten how many hills there were. I don't know why I came down here. There's too many hills. I think that uh, the maintenance crew should put in an escalator and that would make things a lot easier. I don't know how the uh, the mountain biker is surviving these hills because first off you're gonna die on the way down and then I don't know how you're going to ride back up. Either way, braver than I. This is Bee's Fork. The trail brings you out right here. Not an ideal place to cross. Um, there's a little shallows up there. And then over here, we'll go take a look at that real quick. That's where I crossed last time. So here's where I crossed last time. It's a bit uh, shallower than it was when we came through. Although, seems to be a lot more debris up on the bank that I just walked through. But 
the trail you can see in the center of the screen, I don't know if you can, goes that direction. So cross here, head over there, and continue on. No sign of the mountain bikers, so they must have gone that way, or they may have taken there's a service road, or service road, ha, huh, like a fire road, whatever it is, over here. They must have taken that back, because I don't see any further tracks. So we're gonna start heading back. It's still raining. Switch back to rain gear. Start sweating. The rain continues, and as you can see, off in the distance behind me, there's just nothing but a haze everywhere. I'm wore out, to be sure. I think, and I've been thinking about this, that the Ozark Trail is probably tougher than the River to River because I honestly don't remember this many hills in the section that I did, which was the Lusk Creek area which from my understanding is one of the more difficult sections of that trail. So I'm going to have to go home and compare the elevation gain and loss of this trip, which is only going to be like 38 miles, maybe, to the uh, elevation gain and loss for the uh, Lust Creek section that I did, which I think ended up being like 52 miles in total length. So. I think it's uh, this is going to be more, even though it's shorter mileage. But you know, the views are obscured, but still that mist is nice. It's uh, it's very cool to see, and uh, we got about another two miles of hills. I need my escalator, and then uh, and then we're going to camp out. I thought about uh, continuing on to uh, and camp at the same spot I did last night, but uh, there's not any real water between here or well Sutton Bluff and uh, Gunnison Branch and uh, I'm pretty thirsty I still got about another 45 minutes or so of cooking time so to speak on my water and I'm completely out so the Sawyer um, squeeze filter is really gonna help out with that where you'll be able to basically have water instantaneously but with the uh, temperatures getting low I didn't want to risk a freeze right before uh, I was going to need it on the big hike. So I opted for the portable aqua tablets, which are fine. You know, I just have to wait a little while longer. But I definitely think that I'm treading the line of uh, dehydration on this trip. I definitely, uh, you know, when you pee, I'm uh, definitely a bright yellow. So I'm going to increase my water. Now, once I get back to Sutton Bluff, I'm going to drink about a liter and have some Gatorade and then fill that bottle, let it uh, purify. It takes about four hours, as I mentioned. So we'll get set up. I've never set up my tent in the rain. In fact, I don't think I've ever camped in the rain with this particular tent. So that'll be fun and exciting and hopefully not, uh, not too excessive in the moisture department. Still raining pretty heavy. I don't think it's gonna let up. I just ate a bag of peanut M&Ms. That's, I guess, a plus, huh? I'm back at the uh, Sutton Bluff campground, actually the uh, backpackers campground we'll call it. <laughs> Trying to find a good spot. I want to get the tent up so I at least have someplace dry to sit and uh, figure out what's going on. It's probably about 2.30. I think I might set up underneath this tree um, just because it'll give me a little shelter from the rain. Um, it's kind of close to the road but I don't think anybody's going to really mess with me. <laughs> Um, I want to get up, you know, a little bit higher off the, uh, this parking area. So if it rains a lot more, it doesn't turn into a, uh, parking lot. You know, I mean, you got this spot right here with that big well in the background, though. And no cover overhead. And then originally I thought about this spot over here. Behind here, next to the shoe. This isn't too bad, but once again, no cover overhead. So I think, um, I think uh, that tree down there is going to be it, and uh, hopefully nobody will mess with me. Here's a uh, quick trick for you. If you've got one of those paracords, well next time build it with a lanyard knot instead of one of the plastic buckles, and that way uh, you can use it sort of like a soft shackle. 
and hang your pack off the ground. All right, the tent's up. Let it dry out a little bit. It got some, uh, had a little bit of condensation in it last night. Not really anything that was dripping on me and causing concern, but you know, it's gonna collect a little bit of moisture on the vestibules and that sort of thing. And so just try to get it up. I'm gonna open it up here and, and just kind of let it try to air out here a little bit. Um, some old dudes just came by. Um, <laughs> They were hilarious. You want to talk about country bumpkins. They were the epitome of it, and they admitted it, but they were nice, and they gave me a beer. The first thing he said is, boy, you look like you need a beer. Go in the cooler and get one. So, cheers to the, uh, the old country bumpkins. One problem that this tent has is uh, when the door is open right here, water can go into the, uh, into the tent. So, when we open this up, you can see that if it's raining hard, you got a large opening. Now my Alps Mountaineering had this problem as well. Not sure if there's a way around it aside from bringing the, the, uh, the point out. It's 42 degrees and it's still raining. So I have uh, climbed into the quilt and uh, I'm pretty warm. I got all my uh, stuff kind of around. I'm really glad that I got the uh, the double rainbow instead of the single because I think the single, the edge would be like right here. Now I have a little bit of space over here on this side too, but uh, I'll scooch over once I get ready to sleep because I'll bring some of this stuff out of the vestibule. I don't necessarily like using vestibules, but I did bring uh, an extra pair of long johns and some bulkier gloves in case I need them. Not that the socks will dry out, but those little uh, liner clips make good use for uh, hanging things to dry. So it's 5.30 now. I've killed some time reading on the Kindle. And I think I'm going to hike up to the uh, to the pavilion where I was earlier for lunch. And I'm going to cook up some dinner. Mm -hmm.